Hey everyone, welcome back to MOTH. Thank you all for the likes and subscriptions from the last video. I really appreciate your help. So this week, as you can see, we're going to talk about uh, my two-week review of metrics on a low-carb diet, but mostly low-carb diet. And I'll explain what exactly do I mean by low-carb diet. This is going to be a slightly longer video, so I apologize for that. Okay, so having said that, let's get started for today's video. I'm just going to start off with channel disclaimers, but I'm not going to speak through the whole thing. I request you to pause the video and read through the whole uh, disclaimers so that you can understand where exactly I am coming from and especially understand the fact that I am not a medical professional and I'm doing this on a personal basis. So please hit the pause button and please read our disclaimers before proceeding. Before we get started with the review of metrics, I just wanted to briefly explain low carb and the exact variation of low carb diet that I followed. And in this diet that I followed in the past two weeks, I tried to stick to less than 130 grams of carbs per day, which is basically uh, assuming a 2000 calorie diet a day, it is less than 26% of your total energy coming from carbs. Uh, this source link I have put down in the description for you to understand uh, a little bit better about this paper. And this is published on National Institute of Health website. Okay, now let's get into the review uh, for the last two weeks. And I'll try and be brief so that, you know, we can talk about some of the key takeaways and what exactly I'm planning for the next weeks. Okay, so the metrics that I have basically collected is from 13th of October until 26th of October, which is yesterday. And I'll show you the metrics right now and talk a little bit more in detail when it comes to the numbers and uh, the macronutrients. Okay, so as you can see, I've been tracking my weight, my blood pressure, my blood sugars, the number of uh, minutes I exercised and my fasting window. And of course, I tried to capture uh, as accurately as possible the amount of carbs, protein and fats that I've eaten. And wherever it is highlighted in yellow, as you can see here, it's basically an indication that I might not be accurate in this case because I had to guesstimate because the restaurant that I ate at did not have an accurate description of the carb or the protein or the fat breakdown. As you can see here, I've also come up with a new coloring scheme for my blood sugars. And let me take a moment to explain what exactly do I mean by these colors. Anything that is in this light, uh, light orange or dark yellow color, it basically means it's slightly above the normal baseline that I personally want to track. So for example, when it comes to the blood pressure here, I expect my maximum, uh, I think, systolic or diastolic to be 80 and the other number to be maximum 120. And whenever it crosses either of these numbers, I've highlighted it using this dark yellow or orange color. Uh, when it comes to blood sugars, I'm trying to keep my blood sugars pre-meal and post-meal between the range of 70 to 140 milligrams per deciliter. And this is slightly higher than uh, what is recommended for a normal person. So I what I've done is anything above 110 after a meal or before a meal, I've highlighted using this dark yellow or orange color. And if it is above 140 post meal or pre meal, I marked it using this dark orange or reddish color. I don't want to spend too much time talking about each and every number here, but I want you to focus on this average number for the past two weeks. As you can see, my blood sugar, except for post-lunch period, has been relatively stable and less than 110, which puts me within the normal range. And of course, I'm eating medicines, but uh, 
Yeah, I think it is a pretty good effort uh, given the fact that uh, I've been a diabetic for like more than 20 years now. And as you can see here, on an average, I've been getting 35 to 40 minutes exercise. As you can see, my fasting window is 19 hours and I've been fasting for a minimum of 15 hours and going all the way up to say 22 hours on one day. But essentially like the sweet spot for me is around 18 to 20 hours. And during the fasting period, I do have some coffee with a bit of cream, high fat cream. I do have some low calorie or zero calorie drinks, black coffee, green tea, things like that. But uh, starting uh, next week or the week after next, I'm going to try and fast without even taking cream or low calorie drinks. When it comes to the average carbohydrate intake, I've been having less than 130 grams on an average over the past two weeks. And this is mostly accurate, I guess, within a range of plus or minus 10%. And proteins, I've been getting more than like one gram per my body weight of protein. Uh, so I'm happy about that. Fats has been on a bit of a higher side, as you can see here. On an average, I've been eating 170 to 180 grams of fat from various different sources. And most of these sources are natural sources, uh, except on cheat meal days where uh, I had a bag of chips, but I had only like two cheat meal days in, uh, in the past two weeks. Okay, so on an average, I've been eating 2,400 calories per day over the past two weeks. And with that, let me show you something very interesting when it comes to my weight. Over the past two weeks, I have actually lost a kilogram despite the fact that I've been eating approximately 400 calories more than what is recommended, which is supposedly 2,000 calories. And this again goes to show that there are just factors beyond your calorie intake, like your hormone, your basal metabolic rate, and stuff like that, which contributes to your weight, weight loss and weight gain. So this was really interesting for me. So I'll track the weight for another two weeks on a low carbohydrate diet and see like uh, what exactly happens, right? So let's move on to the macro calorie split. Uh, I wouldn't spend too much time here, but essentially, as you can see, carb has been relatively low. I've been getting more protein than usual, and it'll become more clear when we look at the uh, quantity split by macronutrients. And as you can see from this yellow bar here, I've been eating a lot of uh, fats. And like I said, again, uh, most of these are from natural sources like nuts and meat and stuff like that. Okay, now let's look at the quantity right and as i mentioned before i've been getting like a minimum of 68 grams of uh, protein on an average there are certain days where like i just didn't feel like eating too much and uh, those days like for example on 21st of uh, october i ate uh, like very little i guess i had only a meal that day and on other days you can see that uh, uh, my meal meals were pretty heavy on protein and fats with less than uh, 130 grams of carbs on an average and finally from a metrics point of view yeah as you can see uh, 65 to 70 percent of my calories are coming from fats on an average uh, I think only on one day I crossed like oh, sorry two days I crossed the 20 percent mark when it came to the amount of uh, carbs that I'm eating. Uh, maybe it's three days, but uh, generally I've stuck to less than 130 grams of carbs or less than 26%. But then this is a bit of a skewed number given the fact that uh, my carb intake is relatively low when compared to my overall calorie intake, which is at an average of 2,400. But despite that, my carb quantity has been less than 130 grams. That's it for the uh, macro reviews. 
So I'm going to talk about six takeaways from the last two weeks on a mostly low carb diet. And here we go. Interestingly, low carb eating has been relatively easy for me because I was very mindful of what I was eating. Uh, even when I was eating outside, it was not as difficult as I thought. So I managed to substitute like breads and stuff with uh, salads and nuts and uh, maybe a bit of uh, protein shake and stuff like that. Another thing that I found out coming from a relatively high carb diet to a low carb diet was that it is not good to make an abrupt change uh, because your digestive system, your gut bacteria reacts in a very uh, funny way. And I'll talk about that in an upcoming video as to how we ease into a low carb diet. But please don't make an abrupt change. Slowly ease into that uh, low carb diet. Uh, one of the good things that I did personally was find uh, high fiber uh, substitutes for uh, bread and rice, stuff that I really like eating. And I just went with packed, pre packed vegetable salads that I could buy from the convenience store here and uh, just added some proteins like uh, edamame which is basically green soya beans or a uh, chicken breast uh, which is steamed and stuff like that so it was easy to find uh, a good uh, substitute for me personally here living in japan so that sort of helped with the transition i tracked my blood sugars pre and post meal on most of the days and i'll publish this sheet so that you can understand my metrics very clearly you can take your time to go through uh, the numbers and understand like some of my pre and post meal blood sugars so yeah i mean for me like you know the first week was helpful in finding what was exactly my sweet spot when it comes to the foods right so i found out that eating a grill a piece of grilled chicken or a piece of hamburger without any bread of course uh, was okay for me as long as uh, you know I'm not eating any carbs along with the meal so that sort of helped me find the sweet spot so one other thing that I do these days is drink at least two liters of water or say black coffee and black tea or even like some low calorie drinks like for example so this is basically a grape flavored drink uh, zero calories it's flavored with aspartame and sucralose. I know a lot of people are against artificial sweetness, but for me, I found there is no specific reaction at this point of time. But yeah, I mean, I'll try and cut that out also in the future. And finally, plan for a small cheat meal once a week to keep uh, cravings at bay. So, couple of days back i had a small bag of chips uh, from a brand that i really like it's a local brand they make really delicious chips and i included that numbers into my macros i made sure that you know it's not a huge packet it's a small packet just to sort of celebrate my uh, two weeks target and things like that and my adherence to the diet okay so that's it for this video I really want to thank you all for watching this video. I really look forward to your comments. I really look forward to your suggestions. And before you go, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and please do share it with somebody you think will find this video helpful. And I'll put all the materials that I can share in the description below so that you can share that information with people you really want to share this information with. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.